Today on the Pearly Podcast, they're awkward, they're embarrassing, but they just might make your kids better humans. Why dad jokes are good for us. Pull up a chair. Let's get started. Happy Thursday, Pro Life family. Welcome to the table. Pull up your chair. Hope you're ready for a little entertainment. I'm, I'm going to use that word really lightly. This topic today is like a dream come true, I think, for all of us. Yes. Definitely. Oh, definitely. The, <laughs> the idea that using dad jokes will help your children develop into healthy adults. Wow. The fact that you sent this this morning, I was just like... Okay, I feel so much better about my dad status. First, these fine people around the table with me. Kim Schwartz, Director of Media and Communication. Bailey Sundbeck, Development Associate. Brett Klingerman, IT Director, Dad Joke Guy. Right. Um, wow. Made me so happy and I thought, I honestly thought you were putting this in the chat as a dad joke. No, it's for real. Last night I saw it on uh, Fox News and it said that a new study has found that dad jokes help children develop better into healthy adults. And I was like, wow, I'm there so is, happy. God really does use everything, like even dad <laughs> jokes, like here you go. Uh, so can you read some of the findings of the study here? The, the thought here is one of the findings is by continually telling their kids jokes that are so bad that they're embarrassing, fathers may push their child's limits of how much embarrassment they can handle. Wow. And show their children, embarrassment isn't fatal. Yeah. Teenagers, true. embarrassment isn't fatal. Right. You'll be okay. But just just look at this. Yeah. Like the, the dad jokes, you know, are such a small thing, but I think we can all find them just endearing in our lives. Like yeah. it's, a, it's kind of like a sign of affection, you know, um, and it's just a, it's a good sign that, you know, you have that healthy presence in your life of a father. And so many people in our society are missing that, especially with the um, topic of abortion. Most women end up having abortions because their partner was not supportive. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's a total game changer. But then even uh, hopefully that woman chooses life. But if the dad runs off and isn't there for that family, you know, you're having these ripple effects mm -hmm. and the fatherlessness causes um, a lot of pain and frustration for the child, uh, for that mom. So whenever the dad is present, the child ends up, you know, growing up better and um, will be more successful. We'll have better relationships, um, you know. Hopefully they're going to church and the mom, same thing. And it's even good for the dads. And I think that's a big part of this fatherhood conversation that's always missing is we talk about how fatherhood is good for the child, obviously, like no question. Um, good for the mom. Again, no question. And that's good. Those are important. But fathers need to know that fatherhood is good for them, too. Like they yeah. really do need to be involved in their children's lives. Yeah, it, it, it's a quick way to become a better man and a more selfless person is to have some children who need to be taken care of. And it's like, men want to be seen as like capable mm -hmm. and productive mm -hmm. and like providers, providers. Yes. And having kids, being a dad, that's, that's part of that. It's kind of, it's almost as if it was designed that way yeah. that we were intended to have these small people who depend on us and need us to provide and care for them. And we need them to fill that need to feel productive and and um, useful in society. And yeah, it's, it's like it was intentional. Yeah, I think it definitely was. And it's funny on the topic of dad jokes, you know, every dad is gonna be different and have a different personality, but there's just this funny thing that all dads relate to dad jokes. Cause True. kind of going back to your point about how important fatherly roles are is that every, everyone knows, you know, dads are funny in that way and, and they serve that role, even though they all look, they might look different, they might sound different, they might have, they have different jobs and all right. that. Um, that that role in these kids' lives is so important, um, right down to the corniness yes, of, <laughs> of every joke, of a good dad joke, because it, it does help you develop into a person. Thank you, dad, for every dad joke. Oh, shucks. <laughs> it's helped me handle embarrassment better. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously. We have scientifically proven 
these are the effects. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think I like to think too, and we've had these theological conversations before of the theology of dad jokes, because uh, fatherhood is a gift from the Lord. Parenthood yeah. is a gift from yes. the Lord. And um, fatherhood is modeled after our eternal father. Mm -hmm. And so just because this is a phenomenon among like all dads that all dads have their dad jokes. I'm like, God's got something there. Like he's got yeah. an eternity of dad jokes for us, perhaps when we get to heaven. <laughs> We'll find out. Wow. Yeah. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. It'd be a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. But yeah, it's just so good. And I think with the the benefit of uh, fathers in our lives, um, for children, for wives and uh, mothers, and for the dads themselves, there's a benefit in a kept promise. And Seth Dillon of the Babylon Bee was talking about this recently, that um men kind of have lost that society as a whole has lost that value, yeah. but it's so apparent in marriage and um, parenthood. That is a lifelong commitment that you have. And there's so much grace in that. There's so much value in that, that you really cannot get everywhere else and I, anywhere else. And I think that people in society are chasing that in other places yeah. Yeah. and they don't find that. And so that's another part of, I think the mental health crisis that we see in society, but especially like among men, um, that we're not treating men like men and giving them, telling them like, go have a commitment, like make sure you are um, taking care of other people. We are not supposed to be yeah. creatures of isolation. Yeah, definitely yeah. not. Yeah. Um, did you hear about the circus fire? Oh, no. It was intense. Oh, <laughs> wow. I know that's you can wow. you can cringe you can comment just with a cringe emoji it's fine with with St Patrick's Day <clears throat> just in our rearview window um, why don't you iron four leaf clovers I don't know why Kim you don't want to press your luck <laughs> oh my I guess it's my turn now yes. y'all want to hear my dad yes joke? <laughs> obviously what do you call it when kittens are stuck in a tree ooh. Sad. A catastrophe. <laughs> oh. Beautiful. That's bad. But I you're welcome. It. This is good this is, for you. Is, yes. Apparently so. With all of these wonderful jokes, um, this isn't just on our own accord. We have scientific proof. The experts told us mm -hmm. at the end of the study, they said, keep telling your dad jokes. Mm -hmm. yes. uh, will you read that exact quote? That exact quote. Yes. You're taking... Let's see. You're partaking in a long and proud tradition, and your embarrassingly awful jokes may even do these kids some, or the, the, do them some good. Your children. Uh, the paper concludes that repeating the same old stale puns, keep repeating the same old stale puns year in and year out. Um, so the experts are telling us keep telling dad jokes. Yes. Follow the science. <laughs> that's awful. No, that's what they say. You got to do it. Follow. The science. Uh -huh. You know, I I can side with this one. Okay. Yeah, I will. I, I will. Too. Sorry, honey. I will definitely. <laughs> My wife, F, I'll she be going through like a you. binge sometimes. I find some good ones online and yeah. she's just like, please, just, you're sleeping on the couch. Okay. If you don't stop this. <laughs> it's for your children. Now. And see, now it's going to be, it's, it's for the kids, yeah. honey. I love you. <laughs> Happy anniversary again. It was Wonderful. recently our wedding anniversary. Congrats. Um, uh, there is a grace in um, embarrassment because it's a step toward humility. We yeah. shouldn't mm. care about what other people think of us. Uh, we should only care about what God thinks of us. And, you know, we do have to let go of, um, you know, my friends invited me to this thing, but I don't want to go because uh, I don't know. I'm, I just won't feel comfortable. So... Uh, I'm not going to go because I don't want to be feel awkward. You know, you can let that go. And if you're awkward, so what? Show up. God's going to do something with that. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe I did have enough dad jokes when I was uh, <laughs> growing up. But yeah, like we shouldn't be afraid of embarrassment. And, you know, even in that situation, if you show up and you're embarrassed, God can use that because, you know, look at... Um, the passion of Christ, you know, whenever he was stripped of his garments and he was, um, people would spit in his face. Like that requires a lot of emotional sacrifice. We look at the physical sacrifice of Jesus all the time. 
And we, you know, appreciate that as little as we like compared to the value of that sacrifice. Like we just appreciate it like this much compared to its value. Mm -hmm. But there's still that emotional uh, mortification, that emotional sacrifice that is often overlooked. And so the Lord has been telling me that, which is why I think he put these dad jokes <laughs> in my feed. You know, that's beautiful. That's it. Do you want to find what God has to say to you everywhere? Yes. You know, sometimes, sometimes the delivery of some of those messages is proof that a donkey can speak. But, you know, there's if we're looking for God to speak to us, he will. Yeah. So, yeah. Even if it's through silly dad jokes. So tell your sometimes. dad jokes, people. Again, yeah. you've got to follow the science. <laughs> I just I tell my kids I do this because I love you. Aww. So now I have scientific Aww. evidence. <laughs> wow. I, I do this. <laughs> It's for your entertainment, your education, and apparently your betterment as an adult. Mm -hmm. Wow. So there you go, kids. Wow. Hopefully you're watching. <laughs> True. <laughs> okay. Well, well, enough enough silliness for now. We do have a really serious story. It's a really great story we want to tell you about after this. Have a child in high school? Register them for Team Life Camp coming up on March 31st weekend in Kerrville, Texas. They're going to have a blast with canoeing, archery, hiking, and much more all while learning how to better defend the unborn from the crazy agenda of the left. So grab your tickets now. Every life is sacred. Every life is worthy of protection. Register now at texasrighttolife.com slash camp. Without warning, you or your loved one could end up in the emergency room where every second counts and your medical wishes matter more than ever. However, if your loved one doesn't have the right medical documents on hand, they may not be able to make decisions for you in a crisis. My Life Angels solves all of this by walking you through step-by-step -step in creating these important medical documents and storing them online securely for you and your family to access at any time. The service is only $7 a month, but use the link in our description for 20% off your initial subscription period. Don't let strangers make life and death decisions for you. Get the My Life Angels app today. Welcome back, friends. Did you hear FedEx and UPS are teaming up for a new company called FedUp? Oh. <laughs> Sounds about right. They will immediately get all of Sorry. the business. Sorry. Oh my gosh. Sorry. I had to do it. I liked that one. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, we have a serious, serious story that uh, kind of so popped up in the feed early today. Yeah, I'll share it. It's, it's incredible. So in Indianapolis, a 14-year-old girl um, had triplets. She gave birth to triplets. Wow. Uh, they were preemies. So 14-year-old. Yes, 14-year-old girl. Wow. Um, and they obviously spent a lot of time in the NICU being um, preemies. Mm -hmm. And the NICU nurse was also a teen mom. And so she saw this whole situation and, you know, stepped in mm -hmm. uh, to really help this family out and take mm -hmm. care of, of the babies and to help take care of the mother. Um, and whenever they left the hospital, the 14 year old mother and the, the triplets, um, when they got home, the what is it, CPS, yeah, yeah CPS the, came yeah, in the and said Indiana that the equivalent of, our, yes. Yeah. Um, so that the, the home wasn't suitable um, and that they would need to go into foster foster care, all, all four of them. Wow. And so the, the mom and the three babies would all have to go into foster care. Yes. And wow. she's 14. Yes. So, Yikes. Wow. Just, yeah. And there's um, the danger of them being separated at that right. point, too. Mm -hmm. like exactly. The likelihood of them being separated. It's pretty, pretty high. There's not a lot of people who are going to be like, yes, let me take four people. Well, there was one, one time, person. But yes. yes. And so the likelihood of them being separated was on the nurse's mind, the, the NICU nurse's mind. As she, as a nurse, she knew that that was a big possibility. Mm -hmm. So the nurse adopted all four of them, adopted the 14 year old, adopted wow. all three of her triplets so that they could stay together. Wow. It, it just, I have goosebumps. What <laughs> a special nurse right that's, there. Yeah. Yeah. That's. That's serious. And um, it also says in the story that this nurse had already had five kids of her own. Yeah. Now, oh I goodness. don't know if they're older kids or what, mm -hmm. but wow. Yeah. It said she had been a nurse for like 20 something years. So you can kind of factor that in. I don't know how old she was, but yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So she had five kids. She adopted the 14 year old and the three babies. That's just 
you know, that encapsulates the whole heart of the pro-life movement. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, putting it bluntly, the pro-choice movement is a lot about convenience. It's about financial convenience. It's about mental convenience. It's about, you know, making sure. Social convenience. Yeah. yeah. Making sure you're comfortable. um, And we we cannot be like that in the pro-life movement. We need to be all about inconvenience. We need to inconvenience ourselves to help people to respect the dignity of life. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I I just think that no matter where you work, whether you're a nurse or a teacher, um, or maybe you work at a bank or something, I don't know, Mm -hmm. you keep your head on a swivel to see who is in need of help around you, whether whether that be pro-life help, you know, help with children yep. and foster care, adopting, or just helping somebody out. You know, as right. Christians, as believers, we are called to do that. We are called to inconvenience ourselves and put ourselves second, not yep. first. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's, that's what came to my mind when I read the story. I was like, wow, this, yeah. this nurse really did what everybody is scared to do. Yes. Yes. So the the line here now that she's this mom the teen mom is fifteen, mm-hmm. and she said that everybody told me I wouldn't finish school and that I wouldn't achieve my goals, but now I'm graduating as a junior, and was and she was accepted into two colleges with academic scholarships. Oh my gosh! It's incredible! Oh my gosh! Lady, wow! <laughs> so for everybody who says, "Oh well, you know, her life's ruined now," well, p- apparently not. Yeah. yeah, just look at what God can do. He put. He put that nurse there in the NICU at that hospital at that time, put that mom in that hospital at that Mm -hmm. time. And another part of the story that I remember reading was that the nurse loved that little family so much that she would come in every day to come and see those babies Mm -hmm. and that mom. And like, it's just, it's so powerful that one person changed that story on a dime. Because think about the opposite that almost happened, that could have happened, that the three babies and the 14 year old mom all go into foster care. Um, And you know what, God can still work through that, um, but it causes so much more brokenness. But here, this, this nurse came in and just shared the love of Christ, was there to um, take them in, to provide for their needs um, emotionally and spiritually and physically with a home Mm -hmm. and totally changed the game. Now this 15 year old is, yeah, fi- she's 15. She's mm-hmm. about to go to college. Those babies are still alive when they could have easily been aborted. Mm-hmm. And the entire earth is changed because those lives are changed. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now the story yeah. is out there for everybody to share and talk about. Mm-hmm. This And this mom said, it's been great. Stressful? Yes. Sleepless nights? Yes. Yeah. But worth it? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So... <sighs> It's funny, the moms, they choose life. And then they're like, yeah, obviously I would have would do this again. Yeah, I made the right decision. Nobody ever goes, well, you know, maybe I shouldn't have. Yeah. What? Right. No. Right. <laughs> no. no. Boy, there are yeah. so many stories like that where um, it, I, I see them so many, so many times in the media that there's a story of a teen mom, for example, who has a baby and, you know, maybe she does have a hard life. She has to work a couple extra jobs. And the media will straight up say and look at this woman and her baby and say, that child, if only she would have had an abortion. Mm -hmm. And that is so heartbreaking to look at someone and say, you shouldn't be here right now. How dare you? You, We don't have that authority over other people at all. Mm -hmm. That is like God is the champion of life. We are his creatures. We don't have authority over creatures to say that this one shouldn't exist, that God made a mistake. And yeah. If you're listening, I just want you to sit there for a second and think about the most important person in your life. A person that, you know, you might say, I I could not live without this person. This person is so important to me, so special to me. People have an impact on our lives. Like that is just a fact. Mm -hmm. And those three triplets, those, those three, they are important. They are super important. The the best friends they're going to make, you know, Mm -hmm. the, how they're going to, you know, impact their mother, Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, they're just, it's its so special um, that she chose life and that this nurse has been able to to come in and, and help them. I just, yeah. I love this story. And to see this, this story very clearly illustrates that abortion is not the answer. The answer was this heroic nurse who, nurse who stepped up mm-hmm. and helped that family. Whereas the abortion side would look at that and be like, well, you should have just had an abortion. 
that's not the answer. Look at this hero yeah. nurse who came up right. and did the right thing right. and adopted all of them. And that's just, that's heroic. Mm -hmm. It's what we're all called to do though, that sharing that kind of love. I'm really yeah. glad we decided to talk about this story because we do so many downers on the medical industry. <laughs> true, true. That yeah. I, it's nice to tell a good one about a nurse who was going out of her way and, you know, like a, a good story about somebody in the medical field. Yeah, so true, I, true. I want to find more of those. Me Praise too. the Lord. Yeah. And so we can always, like you were saying, we can always be on the lookout and um, finding opportunities where we can be inconvenienced because that's not easy um, yeah. to do something that big. It's not easy to do things that small. Like think about when you're in a rush and, you know, somebody asks something of you, that's an inconvenience. You do have to stop and make that decision, even if it's a small thing, but that's what the Lord calls us to do. And whenever you sacrifice in those small ways, God blesses you in the big ways. Yep. Yeah. I think a really good question to ask yourself at the end of the week is how have I inconvenienced myself this week for the mm. betterment of others? Mm. And if you can't think of one... <laughs> You better start. <laughs> Oof. That's and a, I was, I'm preaching to myself. Yeah. Right? Well, we, we had a pastor uh, speaking at our church this weekend who was talking about, you know, leaning into your calling. And he's like, God did not call you to fill a chair in the church. Mm -hmm. That's that's not why you're here. Yeah. We were called to serve. He has given us abilities and talents and skills, and they are for the betterment of the church community. Yeah. yeah. So there we go, friends. Dang, that's some good homework that we have right there. <sighs> yeah. Y'all yeah. better inconvenience yeah. yourselves. <laughs> Get to um, it. <laughs> ouch. Okay. Well, I'm going to have that on the mind the rest of the week. Hopefully I can good. inconvenience myself. Mm -hmm. So friends, until next time, inconvenience yourself. Have some hard conversations with your friends and neighbors. Share these kinds of things. And also, if two vegans get into an argument, is it still called beef? Oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh. <laughs> I, I really did so. not see that coming. <laughs> see y'all. <laughs> <laughs>